Hey crafty cuties, today we're going to coffee dye some paper. Uh, I haven't coffee dyed paper in a really long time and I know that I have made a number of videos on it, but I figured I would just go ahead and bring you guys along as always. And we're just hopping right in. I didn't speed this up, so don't worry. We have lots of time to talk and I'm gonna share a lot of tips and tricks um, and ways that I like to coffee dye my paper. So you can see that I have my coffee in a dish and I like to make sure that the dish is big enough for my full sizes, uh, pieces, full size pieces of paper because it really helps to make sure that nothing's going to get tore. Um, and so I'm using just day old coffee that I had and I noticed that if I keep my day old coffee in the fridge, to make it day old um that it darkens up and it honestly makes my paper i like the effect a lot better um but you can use coffee you can use tea um i added also some about a tablespoon of instant coffee into this mix because i wanted to make it even darker so you can do that as well now i have some of my pages cut down to like uh, it's basically half a sheet of eight and a half by 11. i have a bunch of that size because i am needing that size for a journal that i'm making i'm actually filming that video too it's a really fun embossed um like faux leather journal so anyways i needed paper for it and i thought i would just go ahead and coffee dye extra I feel like this is one of those projects where if you're going to coffee dye any amount of paper, you might as well do extra while you have it all. So you can see what I'm doing. I like to take my page, dip it in coffee on both sides, and then personally, I always fold my pages. Now, the trick to this, you want to make sure that the paper is completely saturated in the liquid. Otherwise, it will stick together if you have some spots that are dry. So again, that's key. You have to make sure that it's completely saturated before you fold it. This is just how I like to have my pages dry and we'll go over how I have them dry as we move along here. But um, I like to have that page folded because that's how I'm going to use it. Um, you can lay yours flat if you want. It is gonna take up a lot of extra space and that's another reason why I choose to fold them. I have um, a spot next to me covered in saran wrap and that's where I am laying down these um, pages once they're dipped in. The first little technique I want to share with you is using stencils. You can use any that you have and then I have my different ink sprays here. I have one that's brown and then I have this teal color that I was wanting to use up. So the first thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a color um, of my choice and spray it directly onto the paper and, um, or sorry, I'm gonna spray it directly onto the coffee. You can see it's gonna sit there for a moment. So I take my paper immediately and press it down into the coffee. And this is going to be somewhat of a subtle look, um, but personally, I kind of, I don't like to get those precise um, images on my coffee dyed paper. I want it to look kind of just messy and interesting. And so I like how this one ends up looking. Um, I'm gonna show you a few different ways to use it. And then of course you can also use the stencils just kind of like you actually would by um, spraying ink through them straight onto the paper. Now I'm going to just lay this on top of the coffee, kind of let it float there for a minute because I know that the ink is also going to, there's gonna be extra spray kind of going everywhere. And I'm fine with that. So you can see now, the thing is now that I'm gonna take that stencil, that didn't make sense, but I'm gonna take that stencil, flip it over because I just like to use up all of the ink, kind of like you would do in an art journal. But now when I flip this over, um, since this was like a, distress ink it is water soluble so it's going to run a bit but you're going to see that you can see um part of the outline but it's also kind of mixed in and it's, it's just more like muted into the background i guess if that makes sense um so that's kind of my favorite way to use these stencils because it just kind of i don't know it kind of looks like it's all one if 
I don't know. I'm having trouble with my words, guys, like this last month, not even just today. Anyways, I have a paper towel nearby because these do get very wet and I am trying to avoid any spillage onto the floor, but also because I like my paper to dry somewhat fast and so I'm trying to kind of sop, sop up that extra um, coffee, but that also adds some interesting texture. So this is a fun one. You're gonna go ahead and saturate your paper and then crumble it up and then put it back in the coffee. Now this, you do have to be careful because it is easy to get rips and tears in your paper when you do this. But um, if you're using like a single sheet of paper for this technique, I find that it's a little bit easier and more manageable um, to work with. And I feel like it almost looks like kind of faux leather. So anyways, guys, yeah, I'm just going to be sitting here coffee dyeing some more paper as the, as we go along. Um, and I'll talk about real quick a few ways that I like to dry my papers. One, I like to do this at night before going to bed, and then I just leave them out on the counter um, on top of the saran wrap. And I just lit it out or leave it out and let it air dry. And uh, by morning, they're usually pretty dry. And if I'm not stacking too many of them on top of each other, then they're, they're usually dry by morning. But you can see I'm kind of stacking these on top of each other um, quite a bit. And I've never had trouble with them sticking together as long as, again, there's no dry spots. So here I am, I'm just uh, coffee dyeing two single sheets of paper. I want to put them somewhat close to each other because I'm going to use a stencil again and I was just trying to figure out the placement where I wanted to put it but again when I'm using these spray inks they do get messy and the ink kind of goes everywhere so I like to kind of use that to my advantage. I'm sorry guys I did not realize that I was totally out of frame when I was filming this part but basically I was taking the stencil and I was making sure that that coffee dyed paper was not sopping wet because otherwise you know the ink's going to spread quite a bit um, but I took the stencil and just uh, sprayed the ink and kind of rubbed it in with my fingers and then I take that stencil that has the ink and place it upside down on top of the other paper that's right on top that you see there um, and you're gonna get like a reverse image so again I'm always just like in an art journal I'm always trying to use all of the product that I can so I like this ink. It's a Heidi Swap one because it is super sparkly. And my favorite type of spray ink to add to my coffee dyeing is a gold, any type of gold sparkly because it mixes in so well with the coffee color. And you can either, you can spray it just directly into the coffee to get an overall shimmery look or you can you know, use it with the stencils like I am here. And it's just, oh, I love it. But I didn't have any of the cold while I was doing this on this day. So um, yeah, anyways, we're gonna move along and I'm just gonna go ahead and use my stencils again. Um, now for this, I wanted to see if I could get kind of just a darker coffee dyed color through the stencil and so I sprayed ink you could see onto this paper towel and this did not work out really well but honestly guys a lot of the time I'm just experimenting and trying new things and even though this paper didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it still has a lot of interest to it and I'm still going to use it and when it was dry it, it looked really cool so I kind of just went with it so you can see you didn't really you couldn't really see the flowers that were uh, coming off of that stencil, but that's okay. So um, let me know what kind of projects you guys are working on down below. Are you doing any kind of journaling or anything like that? I've had a really hard time doing any type of memory keeping in the last month. Um, I'm just not motivated to do it, but anyways. So with this paper that you just saw, see I did some stenciling um, and spray ink before I dipped it in. And again, when you do it this way, the colors definitely are going to um, kind of, what's it called? Um, spread all over. They're not going to stay in place. You might see some of that image, but I'm kind of just doing it for the color and, and, you know, just a little bit of experimenting really. 
So now I'm going to experiment a bit with how I am drying these and my favorite way is just to leave them out. However, I do use the oven at times and you're going to see I use this silicone um, cupcake holder that I have that is shaped like hearts. I wanted to see if I could get some heart shapes and I think that this works a lot better if you have a metal pan but this did work, um, and so I just lay my paper flat, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the oven. Now, guys, I don't want you to take my advice on putting paper in the oven because um, you know you do have to know that it, it can be dangerous if you're not watching things too closely and whatnot. I like to have my oven on around 300 or 325, um, and then I just watch the papers closely. Like, literally, they only need a few minutes, so. Um, I will show you what that heart paper, I'll show you what all of these look like at the end really. So I'm gonna just continue on. I set that one aside. I do also like to make sure that the papers are not too wet when I'm putting in them in the oven because otherwise it just gets super smoky and you don't want any of that. <laughs> all right, so um, man, my um, as I'm doing this voiceover, a hundred different uh, tries. I'm noticing that my hands are still super coffee dyed and I have washed them so many times. So keep that in mind. If you don't want coffee colored fingers, you might want to wear gloves. <laughs> so I love how the splattered ink looks. And so that's why you'll see that I really do enjoy spraying the ink on the paper before. And you might notice that this ink this spray ink doesn't spread as much as my um, brown ink, which I think it's a distress ink. I'm gonna grab it here and see. Um, and so that's the other thing. You can try different things like alcohol inks because alcohol ink, once you spray it on the paper, it's mostly going to keep whatever design it made. It's going to be pretty darn permanent because it's not like water, it's not like watercolors. Okay, so the teal one I had is the Heidi Swap Color Shine, just so you guys know. And then the uh, brown one is actually a Delusions ink spray. Hmm. So I actually thought that was like a Distress one, but no, I guess that one was a Delusions ink spray. So there you go. Okay, so. Once I am done with my batch of coffee dyed papers, this time I did dry them all in the oven because I was in a hurry to have them all ready. And so I'm gonna show you that if you stack your papers on top of one another, you're gonna get this really cool um, design, I guess you could call it, where there's going to be white out spots, kind of almost like they're bleached out spots. And I personally, love that. You're also going to get some interest. I've said that word so many times in this video, uh, but just from folding your papers, as you can see on the inside, there's all kinds of designs and things that are happening. Hi girl. My little girl's here. She was playing with Bubba. That's why I was uh, doing my voiceover. She just came out and signed more milk. She wants to nurse. <laughs> well guys, um, that's basically all I wanted to share with you guys, again, this is something I've shared on my channel before, but I thought I would just bring you along. I know I have a lot of new subscribers. Thank you guys so much. And if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It means so much to me. Um, you can see I was just showing right here that sometimes when I'm letting my papers dry for a bit, I will take a paper towel and blot over more coffee because you're gonna get different spots that will end up being darker. And again, I'll use the stencils after it's been drying for a while. I wanted to try out this Distress Oxide because this is going to give you a more chalky look. It's just really fun to experiment and see what different looks you're gonna get from using different things. So just be creative. I've even used paint. Um, I think I, I'm almost certain that I filmed a video making uh, dyed like metallic dyed papers using yeah my paints from um, Arteza so if you don't have coffee just use something else <laughs> but here you can see this was this was kind of messy I just did this on a pile of papers so that each like edge of the paper had just a little bit of the design but here I am gonna go through and basically just show you how they all turned out this is one of the pages that was on the heart 
um, cupcake tray. You can see that Heidi Swap ink is super metallic. It just kind of like I was mentioning how I love using gold inks. It's kind of the same effect. The reason I like the gold though is because it blends in much better with the coffee color that it's almost not as noticeable, but, but you know, it's just kind of when it hits the light just right. <laughs> is that right? But I had a lot of fun making these papers and sharing some tips and tricks with you. Do you want to say hi? Uh, hi. Say hello. When I am done Can you say hello? pulling these out of the oven, I like to go ahead and let them um, sit underneath a like a stack of heavy books just overnight or like 24 hours because then they are kind of laying flat somewhat somewhat nice and flattened out but still have a little bit of that crinkly look going on so totally depends you can iron your pages if you want them to be super nice and crisp but i kind of like that uh crinkly look so anyways guys that's all this is just a funny clip of my babes on quarantine i thought i would leave in here so i'll see you guys later bye